We are going to Pate State ahead on today's edition of the podcast. Yes, late kick with Josh Pate does a great job on all things college football. He's had a lot of good things to say about BYU and Jaron Hall in particular. Let's we'll you hear some of those highlights ahead on today's edition of Locked On Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. I work for the Zone Sports Network in Salt Lake City, Utah, as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. But more importantly, thank you for making us your first listen of the day right here on Locked On Cougars. We are very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where, of course, the motto is your team every day. And as such, this is your only daily podcast focused on all things BYU. Our goal here, simply stated in front of you, checking us out for the first time, is this make it is to make you guys the smartest BYU fans in the room. And the way to do that is make sure you guys know everything you need to know about the Cougars on a daily basis. So without further ado, let's dive on in on today's show. And we are going to be lifting heavily from the Late Kick podcast with Josh Pate. Any of you who pay attention to his work with CBS Sports, he's a guy who built up his podcast. That's what we've done here with Locked On Cougars. Started from very humble origins and now has made it into a pretty big behemoth. There's a lot of things with CBS Sports HQ, has his own YouTube streams, live streams, all that stuff. Stuff that I hope to do here in the relatively near future with Locked On Cougars but he's kind of paved the way here and covering college football at a national level. He had some really good things to say in the past few weeks about BYU. So I decided, you know what? On today's edition of the show, we'll kind of conglomerate. There are three different videos I wanted to let you guys hear from his podcast about the Cougars. So let's start off with his overall expectations for BYU this upcoming season. And I got to say, just uh, on its head, sure looks like Josh Pate is a big believer in BYU. Here you go. What do you know about Brigham Young? Probably not a whole lot. Well, we told you the other night, and this is a stat that bears repeating, keep it in mind when you're going to the betting window, one of 19 teams in Power 5 that return a head coach, both coordinators, and a quarterback. They are second in the country in overall returning production. They return 88% of their production last year, which we value as a stat much more than number of returning starters. How much production do you return? 88% of what was a really good team last year returns production wise this year this is a really good team uh, they're 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 going to be better than most teams that oregon plays in the pac-12 uh, so that game at oregon week three that's no gimme at all and certainly they'd be favored right now if they played stanford stanford's over under win totals four and a half now oregon is up there around the favorites to win the pac-12 championship they're at nine Oh, uh, this could happen. In fact, if they beat Oregon in week three, they're probably on the national radar. So I gave this a six. That's a tough game, week three, but it's early in the year. New staff at Oregon. Uh, it's going to be one of the most physical challenges they have all year. So I gave that a six. I don't know. That's not any bolder than a six to me. And if Brigham Young does that, then it totally flips the coin because you, know, you and I have talked about how big it would be if Oregon were to upset Georgia and Utah beats Florida in week one. Well, the other side of that is you're going to let Brigham Young come out there and slap you around again as a conference? Don't let that happen. It's not a good look for anyone, except the folks in Provo, of course, which is a place I still haven't been able to go to see a game yet. Josh, if you're watching this, we'd love nothing more than to host you out here in Provo for a BYU game. I'm a big fan of his work. Uh, the Late Kick Podcast with Josh Pate. I listen to it on a regular basis. I would encourage you guys to check it out as well. And he's talking there more about the Oregon and Stanford deal with regards to the Pac-12. I think the overall premise of the question he was answering was the chances the BYU across last season in 2021 and then 2022 that BYU can make a clean sweep of their Pac-12 schedule. There are only two Pac-12 teams on BYU schedule this year, and I don't think beating Oregon and Stanford is out of the question. Oregon obviously is going to be the more difficult of the two, but as you heard Josh say, this is a team that returns 88% of last year's squad. We all know that they had some foibles last year with regards to the BYU football program, but 
88% returning production obviously bodes well because you expect with another year of experience under their belt, BYU will just overall be a better team. So I'm with Josh. I, I think this is actually a really, really advantageous position excuse me, for BYU to be in. And I look forward to seeing them get their opportunity to have another crack at the Pac-12. And you also heard of see, it's no good for the Pac-12 to go uh, to lose again to BYU because it's just, it's a bad look for the Pac-12. Uh, we had Yogi Roth on with DJ and PK in the lead up to last season. So we're going back a year ago, maybe this time, maybe a little bit earlier in the year, maybe over a year ago. And he essentially said that if the Pac-12 went any worse than three and two versus BYU, it was an abject failure. That was B the Pac-12 winning three of the games they had scheduled against BYU in 2021 and losing just two. What did BYU go do? Clean sweep, 5-0. and Big opportunity here. I think they beat Stanford this year. I've already picked that as a win for BYU. Oregon, I think, is more of a toss-up. You go 7-0 and against the Pac-12 across two seasons. Yeah, the cronies up there in Salt Lake City that wear red can say all they want, but all you got to say is we're 7-0. and And oh, by the way, how many days has it been since BYU beat Utah? Just saying, folks. So some really, really good stuff. And thanks to Josh Pate, the Late Kick Podcast with Josh Pate for that clip. We'll get to another clip about another potential upset for BYU involving their big-time matchup with Notre Dame here in just a moment. Before we do that, though, we need to spend a minute and talk about our friends over at Built Bar. They have a brand-new flavor that just dropped. I actually received it today. I'm recording this podcast on a Tuesday. Most of you are here to watch it on a Wednesday. It is called Mud Pie. And if you have had mud pie, know it's absolutely delicious. If you're a chocolate lover, this is an absolutely incredible dessert. But Built Bar has made it healthy, my friends. It is absolutely incredible. I had one today, and it's absolutely awesome. The mud pie flavor, for the first time ever, it is available both mud pie bar and mud pie mud pie puff. Excuse me. So there's two different options. If you want more of the traditional built bar, they've got it in that form. They've also got it in the puff form. I had a chance to try the puff form, and it is money, folks. It's absolutely incredible. If you're a chocolate fan, you'd better sit down for this. The new mud pie beer, mud pie bar is rich whipped cream and chocolate mousse smothered in 100% real chocolate and topped with the cookies and cream crumble. The best part is the macros are absolutely incredible on it. Just 150 calories, 8 grams of sugar. It's like your mom baked the most deliciously creamy mud pie and wrapped it up just for you. You. Mud pie bars and puffs are available right now at built.com, but they are going fast. So act now. They're only available for a limited time. Get to built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 while you're there. That's L O C K E D 1 5 for 15% off your order. Absolutely incredible. You're going to love this new mud pie built bar and built puff, whichever one you decide to pick. Whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or just need to grab a quick bite, built is the perfect protein bar that tastes better than a candy bar. Give them a shot once again. That's promo code LOCK15 at built.com. Get and join the best tasting protein bars and do it with our friends at Built Bar. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. The ultimate mock draft reminder for you guys. It starts June 16th, later this week, with over 50 insiders. Nothing will equal the ultimate NBA mock draft. The Locked On NBA big board draft experts plus Odyssey insiders coming together to make it the best product it can be. The first pick is June 16th. Search out the ultimate NBA mock draft and follow now so you will not miss out on a pick. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about what Josh Pate had to say. And this one regards the Notre Dame game for BYU in Las Vegas. A number of you have asked, when are tickets going on sale, Jake? The latest I have heard is that BYU is still awaiting word from Notre Dame on ticket availability for BYU and Notre Dame fans. This is all the ball is completely in Notre Dame's court. But according to Josh Pate, BYU fans who do make the trip to Las Vegas could be coming home a lot happier. Here you go. Now, I'm not going in chronological order here. That would be too responsible of me. I want to take you to week six. This one's happening in Las Vegas. A lot of times with Notre Dame, you have to be careful looking at the schedules because Notre Dame plays all over the world, and they also play some neutral site games. So this is one of those. They're playing Brigham Young, and they play them in Las Vegas. This is week six. It's a loaded slate. This is the most loaded weekend of the college football season. This is Texas A&M Alabama weekend. This is Oklahoma Texas weekend, so there are a lot of big games here. Don't let this one get lost in the shuffle, though. As I said, neutral site game there, Las Vegas. Now, what do we know about Brigham Young? We know that is, according to Bill Connolly's returning production ratings, the number two team in America in terms of returning production. We know that they are one of about 18 or 19 teams, I think it is, according to our buddy Parker at Stats of War, that return a quarterback, an offensive coordinator, a defensive coordinator, 
and a head coach. It should be a lot more commonplace, but it's pretty rare in college football. Uh, this is the first trip out west for the new version of Notre Dame, that being the Marcus Freeman Notre Dame. You will have already had a good look at the Notre Dame quarterback situation by this point, too. So we think it's Tyler Buckner there, but whether it's Pine or whether it's Buckner, however the quarterback position shakes out, you've gotten a good look at it if you're Brigham Young. And so you really get to dial up your entire Super Bowl game philosophy here, and you get a prime opponent. And you also have a pretty short spread on this one. Think the consensus number out there right now is Brigham Young plus around six and a half. It kind of looks like that West Virginia pit number. So I'm looking at Brigham Young there. Experienced team, including the Ohio State game. This will be one of, if not the most physical games you play all year if you're Notre Dame. You don't have a bunch of certainty at the quarterback position quite yet. So Brigham Young's pulled this stuff off before. They could pull it off again there. There you go. Josh Pate, he thinks BYU could upset Notre Dame, and it is going to be a very busy weekend that weekend. Yeah, the Texas State and Alabama game alone with the Jimbo Fisher, Nick Saban uh, kerfuffle that we had earlier this offseason is going to make that game alone maybe the most watched college football regular season game of the year. But yeah, Texas, Oklahoma, and the Red River shootout. But Notre Dame, BYU, and Las Vegas, I am looking forward to getting down there to Sin City to take this one in. And Josh makes some very good points. BYU returns, as we already chronicled, the high production, 80 percent having the head coach the coordinators the quarterback all return one of 19 teams across the entire sport that have that and there are question marks about notre dame's just overall quarterback uh, situation who's going to be the starting quarterback they've got a first-time head coach in marcus freeman who's very very young but very very highly thought of how will he uh, succeed in terms of succeeding uh, uh, uh brian kelly there in south bend a big opportunity there for BYU with regards to that game at against Notre Dame in Allegiant Stadium. I am hopeful that BYU fans, you find a way to get tickets to this game. I am fully expecting Notre Dame to try and cram as many Notre Dame fans into this game as possible. I could see Notre Dame trying to go like a 75-25 split on their tickets. BYU fans, I know y'all are resourceful. Get these tickets. Get down to Las Vegas. I'm lucky enough to have media connections. I I sit from a, a point, a, a perch of luxury in many ways because I can go and request a media credential to go watch this game. I'll be watching from a box in the Allegiant Stadium. Uh, I get uh, that me telling you guys how to spend your money is not probably my place to do that, but this is going to be an absolute barn burner of a football game. I am super excited to see Notre Dame and BYU squaring off. Yes, the BYU pretty much telling Notre Dame, you can have all the access you want. You can have all the ticket sales, all that jazz. Was that maybe in BYU's best interest in terms of that was supposed to be a home game for BYU? Absolutely not. But if you wanted to get that game, done you had to acquiesce to notre dame's request it's notre dame they do this to everybody let's be honest this is just how notre dame operates and no matter how pompous it it, it seems or it just seem overblown or notre dame thinks that they're better than everybody else they haven't won a national title since what in 88 i was a one-year-old i think the last time that they won a national title it's still notre dame one of the biggest fan bases in America. By the way, coming up later this week, we need to talk about this. There's a new study out that says the BYU has just over a million fans nationwide. Uh, we'll try and dig into some of the methodology on that. We'll do that probably on tomorrow's podcast, if not Friday. Looking to have AJ Salveson, a dear friend that covers Utah State, works on the radio crew of Scott Gerard on to talk about the Aggies. So uh, depending on when we get AJ, we'll do kind of opposite that show on Thursday and or Friday. We'll talk about the methodology of that. That fan, uh, the, the number of fans, according to three different studies that have been put out there, the BYU has nationwide. We can get into that, but I think the biggest thing is you're looking at a hot ticket there in Las Vegas. But Josh apparently thinks BYU is poised to spring a major upset of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. I am fully expecting Notre Dame to be a top 10 preseason team, if not top five. And by this time in the season, they will have played Ohio State. You already heard uh, Josh talk about that. He thinks that BYU might be, besides the Ohio State game, in many cases, maybe more so, because Ohio State's been considered a little bit of a finesse team in recent seasons. Uh, BYU might be the best in terms of the overall just physicality that Notre Dame will be going up against. That is a huge feather in the cap of BYU. And I, for one, cannot wait 
to see that game go down. I think that everybody out there that's a BYU fan cannot wait to see it as well and very much looking forward to it. And to have BYU potentially spring an upset and keep a quote-unquote dream season alive that maybe is already rolling at that point because this is a week uh, seven, no, week six of the season mid season. If BYU is taking care of business against the likes of Baylor, as well as uh, Oregon at that point, then you got Arkansas coming to Provo the week after that. There's some big time opportunities for BYU. A lot of dreams could be rolling at that point. If you take care of Notre Dame down there in Las Vegas, but the biggest thing is you got to take this one game at a time. We're 80 days away from BYU and USF. All you can do if you're a BYU player right now is focus on the Bulls. We have BYU Football Media Day a week from today. So a week from today, we'll be down there in Provo. I actually just bought a new little tool that hopefully will allow me to capture a little more video from Media Day and bring it to the podcast. This new uh, YouTube realm that we're in, I'm having to add all kinds of toys. So we'll be playing around with some stuff, but get, get excited. We're a week out from BYU Football Media Day, 80 days away from BYU and USF kicking it off. Cannot wait to have the season underway and have it here soon enough. All right, one final clip from Josh Pate, and this deals with Jaron Hall, his most recent clip that I saw earlier this week. He is really high on Jaron Hall as a quarterback for the BYU football program. We'll dig into that here in just a moment. But first, a word on our friends at Intercap Lending. There's a reason that no lender in the state of Utah helps more families in this state with their mortgage needs than our friends at Intercap Lending. And the reason is, Intercap, they get deals done. We all know right now the interest rates are going up at a very quick rate. If you still want to take advantage of some low rates relatively, do it now. Get with our friends at Intercap Lending. That's what per, uh, Locked On's personal loan officer at Intercap Lending, Steve Carter, will have to help you guys out with. He's helped hundreds of Locked On listeners, including the podfather himself, David Locke, the founder of the Locked On Podcast Network. He has been through this process with Steve and Intercap Lending at least twice, if I'm not mistaken, for David. And let's be real. If Steve can keep David on track throughout this entire process, he can help anybody. And although Intercap is relatively new with us here on the Locked On Cougars podcast, we've been advertising with them for probably a year now, maybe a little less than that. Intercap has been assisting customers here on the Locked On Podcast Network since 2018. But more importantly, they go back to 1978. That's 44 years of experience behind them, and they can help you guys out. Steve would love nothing more than to be your guys' personal loan officer officer and help you through the process at intercap lending the best part is they can help you in more than 40 states nationwide even if you don't live here in the state of utah so reach out to steve directly his phone number 385-800-8528 that is 385-800-8528 you will not find a more responsive loan officer i can promise you that if you'd like for us to arrange a meeting between you feel free to reach out locked on byu at gmail.com is the email address to email us and if you mention that you're a Locked On Cougars listener, you do get their corporate rate discount. So saving you some money along the way when it comes to your home loan and mortgage needs. Get with Intercap Lending. Go to intercaplending.com to learn more or reach out to Steve directly with any and all questions that you have got. 385-800-8528. Intercap Lending is an equal housing lender and NMLS number 190-465. Thank you once again for lock, making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. I want to remind you guys, I'm going to point down here into the right corner. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's a little button there. Click for more podcasts. Subscribe to the show. Folks, we are narrowing in on 900 subscribers on YouTube. I know many of you listen to this in the regular podcast form, and I cannot thank you guys enough. But once we get to 1,000 YouTube subscribers, which is relative pittance compared to the numbers that we have on a regular podcast channel still, we're in the thousands when it comes to regular podcasts. but uh, the biggest thing is once we get to a thousand YouTube subscribers, we're going to give some BYU swag away. We just did this a couple weeks ago when we got to the 500 subscriber mark, get to a thousand. We're going to do it again. And we'll continue to do that to raise our numbers when it comes to YouTube. It's a whole new world for me out there talking on video. I'm still uh, trying to get used to it. I'm wearing another hat today. My wife says that I look better when I wear hats on video. I don't know what to say. So I'm doing this more for the misses than anybody else, but hope you guys are enjoying the product overall. All right. Uh, Without further ado, though, let's get to our final clip with Josh Pate. has a lot to say about Jaron Hall. Let you hear what he thinks of BYU's junior signal caller, who's going to be BYU's QB1 in 2022. Jaron Hall is another name that I want you to know about. He's a little bit older now. He's at Brigham Young. He's already done his mission. I think he's a double red shirt guy. So he's like in his 23, 24 year range. I mean, he's going to be a 25-year-old guy by the time he gets to the NFL. He is excellent at extending plays, 
everyone's drunk on that now. Always should have been, but everyone's drunk on that now. You watch Pat Mahomes and you want someone who can do what he does. I'm not comparing the two, mind you. I'm just saying that characteristic is there. He's a very good thrower on the run. Doesn't just chuck it up. Doesn't just run around and gain you three yards, running 90 yards to do it. He's got plus arm strength, not elite arm strength, but he's got the lowest career interception percentage in Brigham Young history even lower than Zach Wilson. So that's always a positive. Um, he's a leader, good decision maker. They all talk glowingly about him. But here's the thing you need to know about Jaron Hall. When you look at Brigham Young's schedule this year, they're going to be in the national spotlight so frequently. They play Baylor. They play at Oregon. They play Notre Dame in Las Vegas. And did you know Arkansas goes to Brigham Young this year? You know my thoughts on the scheduling process at Arkansas. Far be it for me to tell them how to run their athletic department, but my goodness, yes. So with that in mind, Mr. Hall is going to be on the national radar a lot this year. I think he stands a good chance of shining, and therefore don't get caught being the last person to know about Jaron Hall. Don't be the last person to know about Jaron Hall, my friends. Any of you watching this know about Jaron Hall, number three himself. He is going to be phenomenal this year. The biggest thing for him is staying healthy. That is key number one. I have had enough conversations with people who know Jaron, who know his prospects for the NFL, all of that. Number one thing he needs to prove is staying healthy. Is he going to be an older prospect? Absolutely. I, was he going to be, what, 25 by the time the draft rolls around next year? And that's just how things are going to go. The nice part is I think quarterbacks with the relative length of quarterback careers right now in the NFL, I know it's still it's the, it stands for not for long when it comes to the NFL. But if you're a quarterback who can succeed at a high level for a long time, we have seen quarterback careers get longer and longer. The NFL is all about quarterbacks it's a quarterback driven league the rules are set up to allow quarterbacks to stay as healthy as possible gone are the days of jim mcmahon getting tossed on his head on a late hit that's just complete crap and it affecting the rest of his career the nfl has done away with all of that so jaron hall being 25 yes that is going to affect his draft prospects he's not going to be 21 like zach wilson there will be four years of play for a certain NFL franchise that looks at Jaron Hall and says, man, we maybe lost four years of a guy potentially, but let's say that he beats all the odds. If he has a 15 year career, he's going to be 40 years old. He'll be pulling a, a Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers type of career. I don't expect that for Jaron Hall. I'm not predicting that. I'm going to be very, 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 very clear about it. But I think the biggest thing is, is that Jaron Hall looks poised to have an absolutely monster breakout season this year. We talked about it with the NFL draft prospects. He is on Mel Kuyper's big board as a fringe first round guy right now. The biggest thing is Zach Wilson was not on those boards until mid season. Uh, it felt like in 2020. So Jaron Hall essentially is ahead of the curve here, and I think that Zach Wilson's emergence at BYU has benefited Jaron Hall. The difference between these two is going to be the key age thing, and Zach Wilson has a better arm than uh, Jaron Hall. Jaron Hall's got a good arm, but Zach Wilson, there's a reason why he was the number two overall pick. His arm is special. Uh, you cannot teach that, what, what Zach Wilson has. Jaron Hall, good enough arm to succeed at the NFL level. He can make the three. It maybe doesn't have the ability to make the razzle dazzle off platform, throw it 30 yards on a rope type throw that a guy like Zach Wilson can do, but he is more than capable as a thrower. And I cannot wait to see him on the field. But the number one thing, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth thing on the list for Jaron Hall this year is stay healthy. That is the key the key 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 for jaron hall is to stay a hundred percent healthy and we all know that a hundred percent during a season is all relative but if jaron hall can stay healthy during the 2022 campaign byu football is set up for some absolutely incredible success it feels like especially on the offensive side of the football. So I cannot wait to see Jaron Hall get his opportunity. But more importantly, a humongous thank you to Josh Pate for speaking about BYU. Thank you to the Late Kick Podcast and Late Kick with Josh Pate. Pate State. I'm a big Pate State. I love that nickname. Uh, great job covering college football. Check out his podcast. I'll make sure to drop a link in the show notes if you want to check that out. It's available on CBS Sports HQ in video form. It's also available in podcast form. Josh does an incredible job. I'm going to try and chase him down and get 
him on this podcast. We can talk more about BYU, get more of his thoughts in full. We can go full 30 minutes with him, get his thoughts on that. But thank you to him and CBS Sports for those video uh the, the video links, the, the copy of the video there, and appreciate them allowing us to use that here on Locked On Cougars. Look, that's going to do it for today's edition of the show. Happy Lane Lunt Day, 80 days away from BYU football. Number 80 this year for BYU is Lane Lunt, the junior college transfer. His wife, Ashton Reiner, just won the national championship in a Javelin, the first field championships we talked about in 30 years for BYU. Dude's got, uh, he married up, let's put it that way. But Lane Lunt, I think a phenomenal tight end, probably playing in a reserve role for BYU this year. But happy Lane Lunt Day to you all, 80 days, 80 days away from BYU and USF. And thank you once again for making us your first listen here on Locked On Cougars. Go make our friends over the Locked On Big 12 podcast your second listen today. Josh Neighbors does an incredible job. I was part of the Big 12 roundtable this week as well. Check that out, free and available wherever you get your podcast and until tomorrow have a great rest of your day this has been the locked on cougars podcast for june 15th 2022 and we will talk to you guys soon